Good morning everyone and welcome back to another very exciting day here on the channel where today we are starting the LEGO Legend of Zelda custom set showcase Wave Digi. Now, you guys have been waiting for this for a while and today we'll be starting off with set number Z0031 with 495 pieces. It's the Adventures with DigiLink starter course. And for those that you don't know, this is my parody on the LEGO Mario uh, course builder system, which is currently what LEGO is doing for their LEGO Nintendo partnership. And back in October last year, I thought it would be absolutely hilarious if a DigiLink figure, just like the Mario, existed. And well, we, we sort of ran with it here. So over the next five weeks, we'll be taking a look at five Adventures with DigiLink starter sets and expansion sets and power-up packs. Um, all related around the figure and a lot of effort has gone into these sets so if you consider subscribing if you enjoy that would be much appreciated but anyway you can see here from our amazing front box art which is one of the box arts i'm most proud of that this is adventures of digilink with 495 pieces rated ages six and up retailing for 50 great british pounds and this one contains three digi characters one of those is of course our special inbuilt tech press on to play DigiLink with his LCD eyes, mouth and tummy screen and removable hat and torsos. You can also see the Boko on the front and also we have a boss Gliok and this is the starter course as I mentioned. Right, so I'm going to really quickly breeze through this description. There is a lot to show. Um, we have uh, all 27 expressions uh, for the DigiLink as well as color recognition and every... Oh, we're going to take a look at it all. But anyway, let's start with the description. So. Kids can team up with their favourite character in the real world with this LEGO Zelda Adventures with DigiLink starter course. This set features a LEGO Link figure that gives instant expressive responses via the LD LCD screens and speaker. Players earn virtual rupees moving LEGO Link from the start bed to the end of the dungeon via a grand adventure for kids and families of all ages and super battles with enhanced play. This set features digital building instructions via the free LEGO Zelda app. LEGO Link has color sensors plus an LCD screen in his eyes, mouth and belly to display over 100 different instant reactions to movement. Also included is a speaker that plays some iconic sounds and music from the video game. And that is a modified description of the LEGO Mario one from LEGO.com, just as a full, if you want to care. Anyway, here is the set up all 495 pieces and you can see a couple of bits that we took a look at and this is very reminiscent of the lego um mario adventures of mario starter course um so we're going to break it down piece by piece and inside the box we have six numbered bags uh, along with a cardboard box which contains digi link and a startup guide obviously all instructions would be by the manual but if we were to take a look inside some instructions you would see that bag one gives you digi link and the or color sensors, which is very similar to how the Adventures of Mario does it. Bag two builds the start bed, the end heart container, some green grass and a bow coblin. Bag three builds a collapsible tower and some grass chopping. Uh, bag four does some raised platforms with a balance task, some lava and a chest. And bag five builds Gliok's body and bag six does the Gliok heads. Okay, so most importantly in this set is of course link figure so i hope while you wait to take a look at the set you'll bear with me as we've got a couple more surprises to take a look at with digilink now i apologize in advance for this but there was some very very awful voice acting going on here um so the first thing you can do with digilink is you can make him waddle and walk <laughs> well wasn't that a treat it does sound a bit awful but he just makes a variation of <laughs> noises as he goes across the screen. Next up, of course, is uh, DigiLink has gyro controls, meaning he can recognize when you make him jump. So let's, let's have a listen to that. <laughs> Brilliant. So he can move in all three directions and he can recognize 3D space. Of course, he can also snore. That's not fully important. Let's move on to his color recognition abilities. The first color we have is green. And just like Lego Mario, this represents grass. Walking on grass occasionally can give you one green rupee, adding to your total rupee score, which is, of course, the aim of the course building system. <laughs> there we go. Now, more color recognition. Obviously, we have blue for water. Walking on water will drown Link after four seconds of extended contact with blue, uh, the color, and you can jump out of the water to survive. <laughs> <laughs> there we see. 
um, he removed contact with the blue water using a jump and he went back to normal and you'd probably be rewarded with one rupee for that too. Next up we have red, which of course uh, logically represents lava. Walking on lava kills Link after just 5 seconds, um, but removing Link from the red colour will stop the effect, but you have to wait 2 seconds for this. Instead, you can shake Link to put out the fire and this will earn you rupees. <coughs> There you go. So you can see these demonstrations on screen. Um, I'm just being quiet during them so that you can hear the full glory of these awful sound effects. Of course, I had to introduce a new colour for this uh, this custom wave of sets, and so I chose to uh, turn grey into a recognisable colour. And this uh, colour represents the dungeon. So um, I sort of imagine back in the NES days, uh, the final dungeon used grey as a floor colour, and that's sort of where this inspiration comes from. So, walking on dungeon has a random chance of a flying pot appearing, you know that enemy from the old Zelda games. It, when the pot sound is heard, um, you need to stop moving, so if you're trotting along some grey and you hear the sound, well then you've got to stop or else you'll be knocked out for two seconds. So in this example, uh, Link will survive. <laughs> In this example, Link will not survive. <laughs> and you can see there, you can get knocked out for up to two seconds when a pot hits you, because you didn't stop moving. Okay, DigiLink also has some other features, and just like LEGO Mario, LEGO Link um, can wear outfits. Uh, we talked briefly about gyro recognition. He can read barcodes, which obviously comes into the whole course building system. He has lots of varied expressions on those three LDC screens, as well as movable arms. And he can recognise how hard he hit things. And when you do something which I'm calling a hard hit or um, hard jump, he displays a bomb on his chest, which is just a fun little detail. We have one more feature to take a look at before we can actually get into why you guys are here, uh, which is for the set. And this feature is the Skyward Strike. If you quickly move Link upwards, similar to the action required for the Propeller Mario uh, power-up pack, you activate the Skyward Strike. Once active, this hit, uh, the next hit you do with um, Link on a barcode to an enemy will deal double the damage. So let's see that charge-up animation. <laughs> and it displays a blue charged-up sword on his... Uh, chest uh, along with a more determined expression. So just to demonstrate that feature, you can see on the left uh, a normal attacking, um, uh, normally attacking the Boko will take uh, yeah. Yeah. When you have the Skyward Strike uh, charged, it happens instantly. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so that's all of our DigiLink figures. So it's time to actually take a look at what you get in the starter kit. On the screen now, you can see that you get six extra platforms to allow you to rearrange all of the elements that we have on screen, as well as a selection of a green, blue, red, and gray uh, long plates to attach the segments together. And then you also get a variety of segments uh, which all have barcodes and actions attached to them, which we'll go through one by one now. So obviously the most important one in this set is going to be the start, and this is supposed to play off um, Link's trait for waking up late. <laughs> um, so to start your adventure you've got to wake up in the bed, and that is done by scanning the 2x2 barcode on the bed, um, which is nicely decorated in dark red colour with a white pillow, and has some uh, little crenellations around it. So let's watch that animation. <laughs> And as you can see there, it starts a 60 second timer, which is how long you have to complete the level, and starts playing the main adventure theme from the original Legend of Zelda on the NES, and he has a happy expression on as well. Once you start that barcode, um, you're in the game and you've got to collect as many rupees as possible. However, when it's time to end the game, you need to scan the heart container, and this is sort of most to represent uh, like the end of a level, like it's what happens after you get a boss, isn't it? So it sort of felt most fitting to me to include this as the end of level reward, and that is using the friend's heart piece uh, with a barcode 2x2 in the centre, and this was on a grey plate, although the heart could be removed and placed anywhere. So let's see what happens when you end a level with DigiLink. Dun, 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 dun. And that's right, he plays the victory sound and displays the number of rupees collected on his chest. Right, but of course, these two are the bits that you are sort of need to make your course, and this is what makes this a starter course. The fact that you get DigiLink, the starter bed, and the uh, end heart container, 
sort of create this this coarse loading system but everything in between um, and these connected by these plates and um, sort of areas is how you're actually going to get rupees during this uh, game session and therefore how you're encouraged to rebuild and rearrange your course to maximize the rupees you'll get and obviously add the expansion courses which we'll be taking a look at next week. So Mag2 encourages you to build a Koblen the start and the end and this is basically the equivalent of the Lego Link uh, first course setup where you literally get out of the bed, knock the Bokoblin over and then scan him and then finish the end of the course. Um, and I just wanted to show this as this is what the, the Lego Mario sets do is the first thing you build is the warp pipe, the Goomba and then uh, the flagpole showing you how simple your course can be. But let's take a proper look at that Bokoblin. You can see here that um, following the rules of the Lego Mario uh, stuff, everything is square. So that is why he looks absolutely terrifying. You can see I'm using the small little arms and the Mario feet piece, as well as a 1x4 brick with some printing across the front and one of those modified 1x2 rounds with holes to represent his nose. He has this absolutely adorable square face. I loved how cursed these things look. They absolutely look amazing to me. Anyway, so of course, to scan this guy, his scanner's on his back, so you've got to knock him over. And he, then he falls over, and as I mentioned earlier, he has two hit points, so he has to be scanned twice. Hi. <laughs> and you can see that on the fitting, you get a 10 rupee ward, Link's eyes do a little sparkle, he, and the Bokoblin makes a death sound. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. So um, the Bokoblin also has a little fortification to stand on here. You can see two pieces of that here. We have this green hill, which has a hinge in it, allowing you to knock stuff over. And then this brown fortification, which um, can be placed anywhere. Now, these two clearly don't have to go together. But uh, whatever you choose to knock over, inside the green hill is another barcode, which when scanned gives you a five rupee reward. And that's just one scan to do. <laughs> Brilliant. With another five rupees in bag, I think it's time to take a look at how the Bokoblin is knocked over. So obviously the Bokoblin sits on the top of the tower, which you put on top of uh, the grass mound. And then when Digilink comes in and knocks him off, the Bokoblin goes flying. And you can scan both the Bokoblin twice and then the uh, bottom of the grassy hump for uh, another five rupees. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Green Hill was designed to be modular and that ties into the full like nature of this course building system is you've got to have options to rearrange it. And so you could put uh, the Bokoblin on an even taller tower using some of the other blocks included in this set. You could just put the Bokoblin on the ground and knock him over. Or you could even put a chest on the uh, uh, the hinge. And what I like about that is because he sort of mimics a treasure octorok, because when you go to empty, uh, to like hit the chest, you're probably going to launch the chest over and knock Digilink out, which is honestly kind of clever, to be honest. Um, but that's all we can really do with the grassy knoll and uh, the lookout tower. Next up, I wanted to talk about this small little side build here, which is the obligatory lava stepping stones. Now, obviously, uh, Link responds badly to lava, so you've got to make him step on the dungeons. And obviously, you might even generate some pots because they are both grey. But let's watch him go across the lava. <laughs> Brilliant. Well done, Gigi Link. Now, let's move on. Okay, so here is one of the other lava assemblies from this set, and that is this treasure chest. This treasure chest is an exact copy of the one appearing in the Lego Mario uh, Toad Treasure Hunt, I believe it's called. And obviously it's resting here on a red plate. It can actually uh, appear just on its own, just resting on a grey, which is how it can attach to all that other stuff. Now there would be that lock and key print on the front of it, and you can see the activation lever where uh, Lego Link needs to hit. And you can see <laughs> when he hits it. Um, out opens the lid and out flies a 25 rupee box. And here is that 25 rupee box with the barcode on the top, which you can only scan once per game. It have a little rupee symbol on the front, so let's watch Link collect his reward. Dun, da, 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 da. And you can see he gets a bit more of a jingle for this one because it's a specialist block. His eyes sparkle when he gets a red rupee on the chest this time. Next up, we have this grass cutting segment, and everyone knows that all the best rewards are found in grass. So we have this little turntable and barcode setup, which you can put Link on the top of, and then swing him backwards and side, uh, side to side to collect rupees, and it will look like he's attacking these long grass and bright and colourful flowers, which I think look great. Obviously, you have these light blue flowers, which represent silent princesses, and the yellow ones are just there for colour contrast. You've also got the long weeds. So when we put Link on... The uh, stand, you can see he registers the barcode, he has some lines on his torso, and you're going to swing him backwards and uh, side to side. 
So once you swing him backwards and forwards a couple of sides, you get a 10 rupee reward for five seconds of swinging. Then uh, every 1.5 seconds after that, you're going to get another rupee. So just like the cloud in the Mario starter set, this can be a bit exploitative, but um, the rates drop over time. So let's watch him spin. Yeah. Hi yeah. Hi yeah. Hi yeah. And cursed as ever, he does like to spin. Next up, we have this other segment, which is a raised platform, which in my head represents one of those tightrope walks from the Farron Woods region. Particularly, I'm thinking of Skyward Swords Farron, but this has been creatively modified to sit over a lake. And obviously, the platform has to be a bit bigger because it's, well, it's Digilink. So this one's raised four bricks off the ground, and you can see the scanner on the top there. Uh, you also have a little handle for you to pull it by. And interestingly, I chose to use dark tan as the dirt color for these Digilink sets. So here he is on top of the scan, and you can see he gets the exclamation mark and looks a bit nervous, although in my eyes it looks like he's having a stroke. Um, and we'll see him go backwards and forwards. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Right, so there you go. You had a little bit of music there. Um, that music is the Yiga Hideout song from uh, Breath of the Wild, and you can see that as you move him backwards and forwards, you're going to get a rupee reward. <laughs> so that rupee reward, uh, in this case, is another five rupee reward, so ten rupees. Um, and otherwise, if you were to fall off when you get a bit wobbly, <laughs> he's going to scream and be knocked out for a couple of seconds. Okay, on to the highlight of this set, and this is the Gliok fight. Gliok is um, a multi-headed villain from the earlier Zelda games, although he recently appeared in Cadence of Hyrule. Um, and <laughs> I'm not sure how we ended up with three heads here. Um, Gliok is a four-headed monster or two-headed monster, but we went for three because I saw this one fan art from like the um, animated Gliok appearance where he was three-headed. So, you know, we're going with that. But you can see here you're going to have to tackle each three heads, and this is definitely a boss encounter for Link. So this uh, Gliok fight is based off um, the Chain Chomp Encounter set from Mario Wave 2 and the Piranha Plants as well, where you've got these three heads attached to long chains. They rest on these platforms, which when Link hits, um, they will go flying. And um, they're loosely attached, but they're nice, strong constructs. You can see his tail, uh, which is a bit of an appalling build, really, uh, hanging out the back, as well as the three platforms, and Gliok is breathing fire. Okay, so here we start with the actual boss fight. <laughs> We do a hard hit to the first platform, which sends it flying. <laughs> hard hit to the second platform, which will also send it flying. <laughs> and a hard hit to the third platform, which will send that one flying. And obviously, this is in slow motion, just to show you what's going to happen. But the heads are going to fling backwards, and they will all fling up. Obviously, not all at once, but um, individually. Uh, releasing them from the body, clearing the way to the end of the goal. But we've got one more thing to take care of. Each of the heads has... Three health points, and we'll see Link take them down now. <laughs> and after that horrifying Gliok death sound, Link gets another rupee reward, 10 rupees per head, so uh, 30 rupees overall for defeating Gliok, and then can proceed to the end of the course. Well, and that's actually our full build for the Digilink Cut starter course. Just like the Lego Mario starter course, it's a bit light on the pieces, but absolutely full on the playability. Don't forget, you're also getting a really comprehensive digital figure, which has a lot of playability attached to him. And well, we're not quite done today, as we've got a couple more things to take a look at. Firstly, this set is modular and is designed to be rearranged, so I just quickly mocked up a rearranged version of this set for you to take a look at today, just highlighting that this system is exactly like the LEGO Mario one. And then of course, as tradition, we've got to take a look at the characters. So first up, we have G-Link here, who I've talked briefly about and all of his expressions, but this is the same figure that I drew back in October of last year. He still has the digital screens and this really chipper expression, and obviously he is still wearing the green hat and green uh, tunic, which, as I mentioned earlier, will be replaced in our power-up pack, which we'll take a look at next week. It is the reference model based off the original Skyward Sword Link, who is staring very creepily in that image, but obviously squat proportions and squarified just like all of the Mario sets, and I know some people aren't going to like that, but I wanted to stick as close to the cursed nature of Mario as possible. Moving on, we have the Square Bow Koblin, who looks a lot less creepy here in drawn form, and this is definitely based off the Breath of the Wild Bow Koblin once again, but as I mentioned, he has a nice square body, the same stubby arms and legs like all of the Mario villains, and then this oversized head with um, adorable face expression. 
you thought, ah, I like him as a build. I think he works perfect. The first time I built him, I just laughed my head off because I knew this star was going to work. And boy, we've got so many more of these to come. And then we have Gliok, who's looking a little bit worse for wear here in the image. And here's that reference picture that I said I would show you. And yeah, here he has two heads. And definitely my Gliok body is a bit underdeveloped, but these Mario sets are all about the play features. Um, so I think that's pretty much it, really. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really pleased with the way these villains came out in here. Gliok was definitely the hardest out of the entire wave of five sets. Uh, but he has the best interaction out of almost, not everything, but he's got a pretty good interaction. Okay. Well, that's going to wrap up today's look at Adventures with Digilink Starter Course. Now, I want to reiterate how long this has taken. I mean, this is by far the most detailed box art. I had to do 27 links for the five sets. I had to render out sets. And while it may not look like much work went actually into the build of the set, I assure you I've never had to spend so long planning out how a set was going to work before I actually started designing it. I had to think about what I wanted him to interact with, whether there was enough to interact with, what he was going to do when he interacted with it, whether it fitted the vibe, whether it could be achieved with small pieces, whether it could even be achieved on round plates. So much thought went into this set, so I really hope you guys appreciate how well I think they came out. Um, I'm really looking forward to see what you guys have to say down in the comments. So I want everything, feedbacks, criticism, how cursed it is, just tell me everything. I want essays. Please, guys, just give me feedback for this one. But um, I hope you like this first look at the Digilink sets. And of course, is, as is tradition with these custom sets, we have four more to take a look at in the coming weeks. And I'd also like to hear what you guys think is in these sets, because there's some very intriguing silhouettes going on here. Um, but I'll leave that up to speculation down below. And all that's left for me to do is say that next week is Z0032 with 25 pieces. And this is a power-up pack. I'm not going to hide that. But what ability? And what suit will it be? Let me know down below in the comments. Consider subscribing if you thought this was a fun idea or that it's so cursed that it gives you nightmares. And remember that Digilink isn't real. He can't hurt you. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.